Hi, my name is Lynn and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Nourish Your Crown, where we share information, resources, and encouragement to support you on your hair journey. After being diagnosed with early scarring alopecia and CCCA, I decided to take a holistic approach to treatment and I'm sharing everything that I'm learning on this journey and hope that it supports you as well. So if you're looking for this type of content, hit that like button, subscribe, and share it with a friend or family member as well. Today we have an exciting topic to discuss. Uh, which is a fairly recent treatment option for CCCA and uh, scarring alopecia, um, which is actually at epidemic levels for women of color. I heard a physician say that just a couple of months ago, actually. Um, this condition leads to progressive scarring um, and loss. And unfortunately, the treatments have kind of been limited, right? So there's a lot more talk about it. We're seeing more videos about it. I think I started doing videos in 2021 when I was newly diagnosed. And even since then, in the last couple of years, there's just been a lot more content and awareness and information out there about CCCA. And yet there's still a lot more learning uh, that we need to do. And so today I'm gonna, so you know, first of all, today, you know, I have notes. So if you see me look down or look over, it's because I'm looking at my notes. CCCA is, kind of tricky because it can often progress without any signs or obvious signs of inflammation on the scalp. Um, and on the other hand, sometimes it has multiple signs and symptoms. So there are some of us um, who have CCA, um, if we have a flare up, if we're going through a major sort of cycle of uh, inflammation where the scalp burns or it itches, there's hair loss, and then again, there's some people who might be going through it and not really have any symptoms, which also makes it kind of difficult to tr try to treat. Um, instead, also, sometimes what ends up happening is the fibrosis, and that's when the scarring starts to happen. And so that's where you'll see the balding spots and where the excessive scar tissue comes into play which ultimately, again, will lead to hair loss. And so there's been a recent study, though, that the drug metformin, um, which is commonly used for type 2 diabetes, um, is known to activate a protein called AMPK. And that protein, um, there's some connection there between regrowth and the hair loss cycle. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Now let's dive into some real life cases where metformin shows promise for some women dealing with CCCA. Then we'll learn how it's working. And then I'm going to share some natural approaches that might also be helpful. So our first patient is a 69 year old black woman and uh, her biopsy confirmed that she was in stage 4A CCCA. Now, if you have not had a formal biopsy done, and I know not everybody can get one, um, but if you can get one, I highly recommend getting one because by getting that biopsy, you're going to understand what stage you're at, and then that's also going to inform what treatment options are available. So, and I don't know all of the, the different levels. I might actually do another video on that, but this woman was at stage 4A CCCA, and she had tried various treatments um, including topical steroids and supplements um, with minimal improvement. After five years of standard therapy, she decided to discontinue some of the medications and started using the 10% metformin topical cream, um, applying it three times a week and then increasing it to once daily. So the pictures here, um, after six months of using metformin, she experienced significant hair growth. And as you can see in these images, her scalp is showing some really good improvement. So let's look at our second case. And these are all cases, I've linked to the cases below so that you can see, these are in the National Institute of Health, I believe I found those. But this is a second case involving a 54 year old black woman with stage 4A CCCA. She also had tried various treatments with only marginal improvement. However, when she added topical 10% metformin cream to her current therapies, she noticed considerable change in four months. So both of these pictures are showing hair growth using that topical treatment. So I'm curious, is anybody using metformin for a topical treatment? Um, if so, leave a comment below and let us know what your experience is. So some ongoing questions for me, 
that I haven't found any answers to on this are like what happens when they decide to stop taking the topical treatment. So we know for a lot of these treatments like the Rogaine's and Minoxidil's and certain treatments that that once you, once you stop taking them, I think the things that I've heard and read is that sometimes the the episodes continue. So I'm wondering, I'm out of I'm curious if stopping metformin if that changes anything is one of my questions. Um, and the next thing, let's talk about what might be happening or why metformin might be working so well for women with CCCA. So this is when I'm going to go into my notes so you know this. So metformin is known to activate a protein called AMPK, which plays a crucial role in reducing fibrosis, which we talked about earlier, that scarring um, or that in the excessive scarring tissue formation. What I didn't know, which is fascinating, is that I didn't know this, like I guess metformin has been used also for what they call, what's called fibroproliferative disorders, like fibroids and keloids. So according to the study, metformin can also reduce the levels of certain hormones and androgens that can cause hair loss. So there's a lot of articles and information out there about circulating androgens androgen circulating in our system and how that can also impact hair, hair loss. So this hormone reducing effect might be the reason behind the hair growth observed in some of these uh, patients with CCCA. So AMPK stands for adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase. It's a protein inside of our cells that acts like a master switch to help regulate energy levels and balance in the body. So I read somewhere and it said, think of AMPK as like a, uh, as the body's fuel gauge. So when energy levels are low, AMPK, AMPK signals the body to conserve energy and find more sources of fuel. This is important for many processes in the body, including metabolism, insulin sensitivity, and reducing oxidative stress. The other thing that I'm really interested in, y'all, is I'm hearing and seeing a lot about insulin resistance and the connection there also with hair loss. I'm, I'm going to do some more digging on that as well. The other thing that's interesting about, you know, when our bodies are kind of out of whack and not working properly, um, if you see that one of the previous videos, I think it was the most recent video that we did with Karen from Curl House. And she talks about how when our bodies are out of basically in dis a, a period of dysregulation, the last thing that it's concerned with is our hair. And that also speaks to just how important it is to try to figure out what is actually going on. Because the hair, from my understanding, the loss of it, the things that are happening, is really a symptom of some other things. So anyway, take a look at that video in case you haven't seen it. What we've learned is that metformin is known to activate AMPK and AMPK plays a role in reducing the fibrosis. Also, AMPK can play a role in, re in uh, reducing those circulating androgens, which also lead to hair loss. According to Dr. Axe, AMPK can also reduce excess inflammation improve metabolic pathways and insulin sensitivity, that word, that phrase again. Um, it also can help with hormone production, among other things. Metformin and its role in activating AMPK might hold great promise as a topical treatment for CCCA, promoting hair regrowth and potentially offer some hope for those of us who are dealing with it. However, it's really important to remember that these are two scientific cases. Um, now, I've also seen quite a few women in the CCCA Facebook group community that I'm in share some success that they've also been having with metformin. So I'm gonna to link to that group there as well, because whether you're thinking about metformin or any other uh, types of treatment or looking for a community, it's a really great group of women who share their resources and information as well. Always check with your doctor for treatment options. This is me as a person that has or is, has dealt with alopecia, doing my own research and trying to understand. So always do your own homework, ask your doctor. I'm gonna to link to all of these articles below. Um, and so now if there's a pharmaceutical approach, AKA metformin that can activate AMPK, if you know anything about me, you know I'm gonna to try to figure out, okay, so then is there a natural approach? Keep in mind, I am not opposed to medication, right? 
I have some in my closet, in my bathroom right now, if I get a flare up that I'm going to tap in and use if necessary. And I'm also looking and thinking and interested in what are some of the natural ways that we can explore the healing process. So now I'm actually going to share some things that I've learned that naturally activate AMPK. But before I do that, I want to share something with you. So I mentioned this in a previous video. Like I am a journal, what do you call it? Uh, I love journals, right? So I have all kinds of journals. I'm actually looking at three of them right now in front of me, including the one I'm about to share with you. So I love a good journal. And so one of the things that I found on this journey was I wanted something that I could use that was comprehensive in terms of wellness, but I could also use it for some of my personal thoughts. And so I decided to create one. So I'm excited to share with you all uh, our Nourish Your Crown Daily Wellness Journal. And in this journal, um, there are quite a, a few ways you can use it. So there's a place in the journal. So if you like journals, if you think you want a journal, if you want to track your journey, this is going to be the book for you. There is a space for you to write a daily affirmation. You can write something that you're, some things that you're grateful for. You can talk about or write things that you can do to make today great. There's a space for thoughts and reflections, um, a place to track your water and your exercise and your uh, mood, a place to track your meals. And, um, and then also every seventh day, there is a weekly crown log. And so in that crown log, you can write um, a hair affirmation. You can write what products you use that week, what worked, what didn't work your moisture level, your protein levels. I actually used it a couple of weeks ago because I found that a little combo, a, a product combo that I liked and I finally could remember it because I actually wrote it down in my journal. So if you are looking for a journal um, to use, this one is going to be a journal that you can use for, it's a 90, 90 days, so you can track your journey over the 90 days. Plus I have some smoothie recipes in the back. Um, in the back there. Grab your copy today. Let me know if you use it. Let me know if you like it. And um, I'll link it in, in the description box below. We know that metformin is helping women dealing with CCCA, topical metformin. We know that it is working because there's some connection between AMPK, which is a protein um, that is in our body that helps regulate fuel and hormones and among other things. And we also are now about to talk about what are the natural ways we can activate AMPK. You're not going to be surprised about these because quite frankly, these are all the same things that are in all of the recommendations for um, that I've been saying for a while that I've been reading about and understanding and learning for a while. So no surprises here, but that's kind of a good thing, actually. First up is exercise. Um, regular exercise can increase AMPK activity in muscles, helping to improve insulin sensitivity. There that goes again, that word, that phrase again, and energy balance. Um, number two, eating a balanced diet. And we've talked about this, y'all. So consuming a diet that is low in refined carbohydrates and added sugars and unhealthy fats, but high in fruits and vegetables and healthy fats and whole grains can help increase AMPK activity and promote overall health. Additionally, there are a couple of things, and that this was on Dr. Axe's site, that um, some foods that, there's scientific evidence that it ha helps activate AMPK. Blueberries, green tea, grapes, and turmeric, among other things. So those are a couple of things that if you're not already using them, if you don't have any allergic or intolerances to them, you may wanna consider adding those to your body, um, to your diet. Um, intermittent fasting. So I'm torn between this, not because I'm torn whether it's true or not, but you know, there was this whole phase about intermittent fasting. Everybody should intermittent fasting, eat one meal a day, eat two meals a day, don't eat till 12. And that kind of works actually well for me because I generally am not hungry in the morning. But according to this research, a intermittent fasting, short-term caloric restriction, um, can increase AMPK activity and improve insulin sensitivity. Now, on the flip side of it, I also just saw some, some uh, I think it was a physician and a nutritionist say that women that are in perimenopause or menopause 
might need to rethink their approach to intermittent fasting. And so I want to do some more research on that. So just do your homework on that. The next thing that can help activate AMPK, again, no surprise here, is reducing stress or at least managing our stress levels. And so chronic stress can reduce AMPK activity. So reducing stress through techniques like mindfulness, exercise, sleep can help reduce some of the negative impact that stress has on our bodies. And then a fifth way to increase AMPK, um, and I'm going to be really careful about this because I know a lot of us want a quick fix. And so if I put a link to something that's going to work, well, a lot of, it'll probably be, you know, people will go out and get it, but we have to be really careful because we are talking about regulating our body's systems. And again, I'm not a physician. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you what I'm learning. And so I'm going to not, I'm not going to go too deep into herbs and supplements. I'll let you do your research on that just because a lot of us are on other medications and I that's not my expertise. I, I'm, I will share with you maybe in a couple of weeks what I am taking related to it, but I don't want to go into too much of, with that right now just because it's still kind of new to me as well. So what I appreciate about these options is that, number one, most of them are pr primarily free or something you're already doing. Number two is a lot of the same things we've been talking about. Like there are no shortcuts to this process. And in some cases that can be comforting. In some cases that can be really frustrating. Trust me, I get it. Um, but there are some things we can do to help position ourselves, to position ourselves and our bodies to be in a healing state. And so I think, and if you're watching this, you're already on that journey. And so kudos to you for that. And so just wanted to share another resource, another thing that's out there that if you're not already considering it or engaged in it or wanting to learn about it, this might be something to think about and to talk with your doctor about, your dermatologist or your doctor. Because it was really interesting for me to learn. I'm also learning, There's I just read this a couple of weeks ago, there's a new FDA approved drug for alopecia areata that is deals with another uh, physical mechanism in our body, but they package it into a pharmaceutical drug. Um, so I'm really going to dig into that one as well. If you want to learn about that one, just hit the, uh, leave a comment, hit the like button, let me know, and I'll do a video on, on that one as well. Hope this content was helpful. Um, as always, live well, live blessed, nourish your crown, and I'll see you in the next video.